So when I started the company, it was just my wife and myself. We have had like many, you know, failures mm -hmm. and we have learned from them and we have always tried to improve. I will call 100, 150 people every single day and try to convince them, you know, to at least come to a meeting. This man said he did 2,000 calls in a month. It can be done. Who has my money? Yeah. You know, somebody has your money. There's a person walking out there right now, and maybe they have your money. That's your next contract, maybe. Go talk to them. Don't be shy. So just just get started. What, what's the worst that can happen? You fail, you, you already don't have anything. You haven't even getting started. So if you fail, just keep trying again. I have failed more than five businesses since I was 18. To the top, they ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids, own property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. Cause that's all it takes. Don't oh, flash it for I'm on my grind, not no more. What's up, y'all? It's AJ Simmons here, founder of the Clean Biz Network, and also I'm the Cleaning Business Goat. And today I am back with another guest, and today's guest actually owns a virtual staffing company, and I had the pleasure of using this company, and so I said, you know what? We might as well get him on for an interview for today. So without further ado, please welcome my guy, Mr. Roberto Saldana. What's up, Roberto? Hello, AJ. Thanks for inviting me to your podcast. I'm really happy to be here. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you for being here. So the way we usually start the podcast off, if you don't mind sharing with us about where you are as far as revenue goes with your company. So uh, last year, 2023, we ended up the year uh, doing $250,000 in revenue. That's what's uh, up. We have been in business for a, a year and six months, um, and we're trying to scale and grow uh, for this uh, year, 2024. That's amazing, bro. So congrats on that. Congrats on that. All right, now we're gonna rewind a little bit before we jump into how you built your business to that point. We just wanna slow down a little bit and just ask you like, who is Roberto, where you're from, a little bit about your background. Okay, so Roberto, Roberto, um, I'm from Managua, Nicaragua, which is a country in Central America, a third world country. So there is only like a few opportunities, you know, for people out there. But I was blessed to be able to come to the U.S. and learn English and kind of, you know, start like learning about businesses and how to become an entrepreneur. I always have like big goals, even though in my family, they, they, they have never been like an entrepreneur on my mom's side of the family, which is who I grew up with. And I decided to take a chance, you know, in me and see if I can make something bigger for my family and for the, for my kids because I have kids as well. Okay, you said you had to learn English, so you learned English once you moved here? Yes, wow. so basically um, my siblings, they live in California. Okay. Uh, I came here when I was 16. Yeah. They used to talk to me and I was lost because <laughs> I didn't know what they were saying. Yeah. So I had to push myself. I picked up my first job at 18 and when I went there, the people that was training me, they said, it's either you learn English so we can teach you how to do the job or then it's not going to work out for us. Wow. So, but they were, they, I think they pushed me to, to really learn, you know, and they were always teaching me like new words and what this means and what, you know, the X word means and whatnot. So that really helped me to learn English and I mean, it's my second language. I speak Spanish as my first language. Okay. That's pretty good, man. You came a long way. So now out of all of the businesses to start, why a virtual staffing company? Well, I have to tell you, so after I quit that job that I just talked about, I decided to move back to my home country because I thought that uh, my life was meant for something bigger than just having a job. So I started a restaurant uh, business and then for like reasons that, are, that were out of my control, something happened in my country and I had to come back here to the U.S. in California. So I had to shut down that business. Then I decided to start another business, which is like uh, sending stuff from the U.S., like products to my home country, Nicaragua. And I went back home and I was able to sell makeup, sell makeup courses with a partner that I have out there. It was really great. I know that people may think it's weird, but it's always <laughs> about sales, you know. Right. I wanted to sell and I was good at it. 
And then I had the opportunity to start a business process outsourcing company, so a virtual staffing company uh, with a family member, but it didn't work out really well. Um, and then I just decided to start my own. Um, I picked out a job doing sales from Nicaragua for a company in California. So I saw like how beneficial it can be for businesses to hire callers, admins, or just like a general virtual assistant, executive assistant uh, from overseas, cutting the cost, uh, then just hiring somebody local that, you know, somebody local, uh, they may have the experience, but we have people that have MBAs, they have degrees overseas that can have more experience and that can do a better job than even somebody that is local at like half the cost. Yeah. So with that said, like, I always wonder, like, are you, do you, do you, is there a sentiment like in other countries, like for where you're from, for example, Nicaragua, I can never say it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, is there a sentiment like, you feel cheated sometimes because you know that we're hiring you at a, a decreased cost. You know what I mean? Like, is there any type of, of, of feeling of like, you know, I'm being cheated, for example, because you just admitted like, okay, you're cutting costs by hiring overseas. Is there any type of disgruntledness or anything that you've heard or seen uh, in your experience? Um, actually, it depends of the business that you're working with. There are many call centers in Nicaragua uh, we don't only hire from Nicaragua, we hire from Latin America and the Philippines as well. But I was in the uh, in like uh, in the BAs, the virtual assistant shoes before because I used to be one, and I knew that whatever I was getting paid, it might it might be too low for me, you know. So what we try to do is we try to uh, match um, or even go higher than the market rate uh, to make them happy. And we don't feel cheated. And I talk about we because I was there before. Right. We don't feel cheated because the minimum wage in our countries can be one to two dollars per day or $150 a month. And when you have a job overseas that is paying you 600, 700, uh, some of our BAs make $1,200 a month. That's a great salary for them for being in their home, working from home because they don't have to commute to an office, they don't have to get a car or pay for a bus to go to an office. They just get their internet, a good computer to work, you know, and they're, they're making money from home and they're not getting uh, a rate that is like the local rates, $150 a month. You know, that's too low. They cannot live out of $150 a month. Okay, so they kind of ball in there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You will see people that they they have like a nice apartment, yeah. they have a nice car, okay. you know, because they work really hard. They're pretty good at what we do. Some get bonuses from the clients because some of our clients, they say, hey, give a bonus to our VAs because they're doing a pretty good job. Okay. So they, they're really happy, you know. And also, uh, this opens more doors for them because they're learning and then maybe in the future they can land a job in a bigger company that is also looking for remote workers and they can make a pretty good salary out of that. Okay. Now, what is a virtual staffing company and like what separates it from like a traditional staffing company? So, virtual staffing company, we only specialize uh, in virtual uh, candidates because you are not able to see them here in front of you. A traditional staffing company, you know, you go and you have a business, you need, for example, you need cleaners, you know, so you talk to them and say, hey, I, I'm hiring local for cleaners in my area. Can you get me some applicants? With those, it's like for vacancies like uh, cold callers, um, SDRs, BDRs, or admin assistants, you know, are tasks that can be done on the computer and they're virtually done. So even though that you're here in Jacksonville, you can have a person working for you remotely in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, El Salvador, for example. So that's why it's a virtual staffing company because we only hire somebody that you're going to be able to see them virtually. But some people have like take the step that they take a flight to the country and they go meet their VA. So maybe their VAs, they have like visa for the U.S. and they invite them to come here and then spend some time in their businesses to see their daily operations and you know to learn more about the business so they can improve yeah that's that's a, that's like on my bucket list you know i hired heavy in the philippines and i'm dying to get over there and go meet a lot of my people they've been with me long term so 
looking forward to that. And I tell you what, if I go like Costa Rica and some of the, these places in uh, was it South America, that'd yeah. be easier for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's one of the main reasons why I like to be here in Jacksonville because yeah. it's only going to take me two flights to get to my home country in like a three hours, you know, on on a plane. Okay. So I'm closer to to my home country. And, and our goals are to like open offices uh, with clients. There's clients that are going to be requiring like 10 callers or something like that. And that's our goal. We don't have those clients yet, yeah. but we know that we're going to get them. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to hiring, like, is there any, like, what are you looking for when you're hiring uh, new workers? Like, is it particular questions that you ask that they need the right answer to? Is it more of a gut feeling thing? Like, like what are you using to find good workers? Yeah, so right now, basically, the first step that we take is we ask our clients what are their expectations and what are their needs. Uh, what are their needs? And basically, we draft a job description for our clients with what they tell us on a meeting. Uh, and based on that, we have a software where we can uh, put like customized questions for the candidates that are applying with us. They, they answer those questions, and based on those questions, we, we make the decision whether to present them or not to our clients. We present them a top three or a top five of candidates out of like 100 or 120 people that apply for the vacancies. Um, so it's not a gut feeling. It's more of like how they can like answer to those questions, how much knowledge they, they, they look to, to have. Um, and also then we, uh, we take them on a meeting with our clients and our clients are able to ask more questions and expand, you know, because you need to get to know the people that you're looking to hire. It's not just like a process. We have our processes, yeah. but you also want to be human and like see if what you're looking for is what they're offering to you. Okay, I like that. So it's like, yes, we put you through the process, but all right, now that you pass that part, let's get to know you as a person and see if you really... Right yes, because okay. some people, they have goals to stay in a company for the long term. Some people, they're just looking to learn a little here, a little there, move on, you know, try to make more money, move into another job. Or so, and, and also some people have like families, so they have the goal to have a stable job, a steady job, you know, that they can rely on. Right. And yeah, that's why you, we want our clients to get to know the candidates a okay. lot better. Now, when you say the process is, did, is that something like you built yourself or is it like, um, like how would you come up with that whole process of the questions you put them through and all of that type of stuff? Yeah, so I have a, a team that is always like backing me up okay. and we have, we started doing the process. So when I started the company, it was just my wife and myself. It's really hard to kind of put everything together in the first month, second month. We have had like many, you know, failures mm -hmm. and we have learned from them and we have always tried to improve. So in, in all that time where we have failed, it's where we started implementing always new things in our businesses, new processes. How can we improve this? What contract and how the contracts should look, you know, with our clients, with our BAs, the handbooks, everything to make sure that the BAs are doing their job. How can also, we, how can also, can we track uh, what are they doing on a daily basis? So we implemented Time Doctor. Time Doctor has been around for a while. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it. But not every virtual staffing company is willing to invest in those tools to make sure that the client is happy, that the BAs are well taken care of, and that the workflow is smooth all the time. Gotcha. Okay. Now, what about finding customers, right, to provide the service to? How have you guys been finding uh, different companies to partner with so far? Yeah, so out of full transparency, AJ, I started finding my customers via cold call. Okay. When I started the business, uh, I would call 100, 150 people every single day and try to convince them, you know, to at least come to a meeting. Um, I had my wife put together a presentation, like a pitch deck, uh, on who we were or who we are and what we do, how we do things and the expectations and how the process work. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get people to come to meetings. Maybe they were not my ideal buyer, uh, but at least I was happy that m my name, you know, was getting to some businesses. And I was able to sign my first client after a month. Uh, after a month. Um, How many calls do you think you made in that first month? 
about 2,000 phone 2000 calls. 2,000 calls. How many yeah. meetings did you actually get? I had about 25 meetings. Wow. Wow. Yeah, 25 meetings. The deal. And then if you, if you care to share about how much was that contract for? That contract was a $2,000 a month contract. Bam. Bam. Yeah, $2,000 a month contract. It was a full-time uh, salesperson. Yeah. Um, and also, I used to work at this business because always it's really important to keep open your connections, you know. I used to work at this business. It's a real estate media company in the Bay Area. And they needed some video editors. And I said, I can get them for you. Mm -hmm. And they became my client. And at this point, like almost two years down the road, they are still my clients. And they have gone from one editor to have full, four full-time editors right now with them. So it's always, you know, really important to go back to your surroundings. You know, who do you know? Who can help you? Hey, I started this business. Do you think that you know anyone that might be uh, able to benefit from what I'm doing? And in that instance, you know, you're able to maybe close a deal. You never know. Yeah. Right. Now, you know, I love that. And the reason why I wanted you to break down that whole cold call process is because what I tell y'all, <laughs> right? What did I tell y'all? For you doing business to business. So I teach commercial cleaning, we're doing business to business. And the number one thing that we use, even I have a lead generation service, is cold calling. That's the number one thing, y'all. So I'm telling y'all, pick up that phone. This man said he did 2,000 calls in a month. I just pulled up my calculator right quick while he was talking. If he called seven days a week, that's about 67 calls a day. If he called five days a week, that's about 100 calls a day. So it can be done. You pick up the phone, put the work in. Out of 2,000 calls, he got 25, we call them walkthroughs. He got 25 meetings. Close the deal on one, $2,000, you up $2,000 a month just like that. Put the work in, y'all. Uh, but I love that. I had, to, I had to make sure they got that lesson right there. I didn't want that to go over the head. All right, now, which industry does your company typically specialize in staffing for? Yeah, so I I started like hyper niching on one single industry when I started, which uh, was like real estate media companies and marketing companies. Because I know that they need like uh, video editors or like project managers. So that, that was like my goal. I looked up in any, in every city of the United States for all these type of businesses. Yeah. And I called all of them. Um, I was doing the cold calls during the day. Then after I was done with my calls, I will be working with my wife on our website, our Instagram, you know. How, how are you getting a list to make those calls? Through Google. Okay. Google. Google Literally hunting. On Google and All, yeah, Google. Yeah. I didn't have money to invest in Sales Navigator right. or Simless or Zoom Info. All these tools now that exist for you to generate leads, I didn't have the money. right? So I used Google. Google was my best friend. I had a phone with me. I had a computer. And I used to put in the work. Yeah. Now, uh, in the present day that we're at right now, I have a salesperson that is working uh, with us in the in the company and then this person is the one that is in charge of generating new deals for us I'm not longer doing the call outreach myself because as you grow you have to make sure that you pull yourself out of certain areas of the company in order for you to be able to scale the company because if you don't scale you know you're just gonna be stuck in the same for how many years you know you're gonna get tired of it so yeah, I have somebody now that is doing the, the cold calls for me. She is from Nicaragua as well. Okay. She's working from home, from her computer. She's having meetings, doing cold calls, sending emails. She's not in the U.S. Okay, fair enough. Now, let's say I got a cleaning company right now that's watching this video. They say, you know what, Roberto, I want to reach out to you. I want to partner with LinkUp and hire an employee or a person through you. Would they be hiring them as an employee or a subcontractor? Yeah, so basically the way that we do things is we charge our clients for a service. Okay. Uh, so they don't have to put them on any any uh, W-2s, on 1099s, nothing like that. They come to us, we have an internal contract that we put with our clients, uh, and then we start sending them the, the invoice twice a month. Uh, they pay for the invoice and then they can um, you know, use those invoices on their taxes and declare that as a service because they're just paying a U.S. company. We are a U.S. company. Even though we have employees overseas, we are a U.S. company. So they will be working with a U.S. company directly. So they don't have to worry about contracts because one thing that we do is besides looking for your ideal candidates, we take care of the HR, we take care of the onboarding, we take care of the recruiting, we take care of the payroll. The benefits 
so you don't have to. Oh, I love that. Now, is there any type of like special paperwork as far as taxes go, or legalities, anything that we have to worry about when we, if we would hire your company? And no, you don't have to worry. You, just, you just, I, I work, I have been working almost for two years with businesses. What they do sometimes is they will send me a 1099 wow. saying that they pay me wow. for a service and I will like fill out my information or the information for my business and I will send it back to them and they will just send me a 1099. Um, but other than that, you don't have to worry because now if you're trying to do it yourself and you're paying people overseas, then it, it might get complicated for you to be dealing with all this little task, you know? Yeah. And that's what I was about to ask because you know I got, I am doing it myself, so selfish question. Is there any type of paperwork that I should be sending to my uh, virtual assistant? Like, proven that they work for me as contractors, I guess. Yeah, so I will say that you have to use the right tools to send that money. Okay. There is many like uh, softwares and companies that now allow you to pay employees overseas. Okay. And then at the end of the of the year, you know, you can put that on your taxes as well. But yeah, there is a form that the person that does my bookkeeping and the CPA, they fill out for me saying that I have people overseas that I pay money to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What I would say is, so what services could uh, your team or your company provide for a cleaning company? Okay, so for cleaning companies, um, I had the opportunity last year to get my first cleaning company okay. uh, client in New York, and they were looking for a client coordinator. So a person that can uh, be like an account manager, uh, they, they assign her 15 clients from the current clients that they have. So if this client has any issues with the, the cleaners, the techs or whatever, they will go to this BA mm -hmm. and they will request, you know, hey, I don't have like toilet paper in the facility. Can you like make sure that you order it for us? And she will coordinate all that in the back end. And also she will pick up on phone calls and, you know, talk to people, maybe sometimes like send estimates or whatever. I, I don't really know what she's doing now, right. right? But I know that she is helping on that side of things. I like that. Now, how much, like on average, if you had to guess to me about how much would uh, that run for a company? So right, right now, the they're paying about $10 per hour okay. for that person. Um, we also have placed uh, cold callers for other companies like SDRs. But it's, it's, this is where it gets tricky because when you have a cleaning company, you have to make sure that the back end or, and your systems are already in place for this to work out because I can get you anyone that can come in and do calls for you. But if you don't have the system already built, it's not really gonna work out. So, but we are part of that process and we can help you, you know, generate that process for you as well. If always if our clients are open to to doing it, so you know, yeah. not everyone is like some somebody else to come and tell you, hey, this is what you have to do. Right, right. Okay. Now I know we spoke like it behind the scenes already about this, and I know that you have a day job. So, how do you manage having a day job while also managing your company? Yeah. So this this is something that um, that I don't tell everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, I just moved um, out of Nicaragua with my whole family uh, to eight people living with me. So my business is doing good, you know, to 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 some point. But I, I just moved into a different country. I decided to pick on a sales job um, that I'm doing here in Jacksonville. And I think that whatever you do in life, if you're pretty good at something, which I feel like I'm good at selling, uh, you know, you're going to make it work, whether you fail a business and you go and get a job selling cars, you know, if you if you have the skills, you're going to make it work. So I picked up this job in sales. Um, I sold to that company last month, $83,000. Um, I'm getting ready to leave the company and then focus on link up again, 100% of my time. But how I have managed to continue with my business is I have a pretty badass team behind me. Yeah. My wife, I have an executive assistant, I have a general BA, I have a salesperson, and I have built a system so when my salesperson brings a meeting, uh, she knows what to do, she knows how to present it. Uh, then I have a recruiter that when we need to recruit for a, a company, she already knows what to do, how to do it, following the system. So they don't need me 100% of the time. I have worked really hard to make it happen and build it that way. So, because my goal is not to work in my business for the rest of my life. Wow. I want to, you know, have some time for me and to be, to have peace of mind that if I ever go on vacation, mm -hmm. my team is gonna have me cover. Now, I love that. And now, 
because somebody watching this might be like, okay, well, if I had a $250,000 company, I'm not having no job, right? And so what I could definitely see, right? Because I've been in business long enough to know, you know, that all of that money isn't your money. It's a company and you got systems in place. You got a team to pay. So I guess my, advice, my, my question to you will be, what advice could you give somebody who is, you know, trying to live off that, you know, that, that $250,000 company uh, full time, pay themselves six figures and, you know, do all of this stuff. Like, what advice could you offer them? Should they be getting a job as well, or is it just unique to their situation? What is your thought? Well, it depends on the on the situation, uh -huh. right? Because if I if I was single and I didn't have no kids, yeah. I can be comfortable living out of my business. Right. But I just made a sacrifice because I wanted my kids to have a better future and a brighter future here in the U.S. So, was I living comfortably out of my business before then? Yes, I was. Uh, right now, why did I pick a day job? Well, first, because I feel like I have like a long time in this world uh, and it's not going to kill me to have a job. Sometimes we have to go back to our roots, you know. Um, I went to this place and I picked up this job. The first day I felt really bad because I haven't been working for a boss or anyone, you know, for years. But I realized that I met people that can help me get farther in my life because I met this guy that he also has a business, right? And now we're talking about virtual assistants and he's one of my customers. Wow. So like, you know, it turns it turned out in, in a way that, okay, I'm doing this job, but I'm also networking with people. And they I also have the flexibility to be working in my business while I'm working in my job because it doesn't require me to be present 100% of the day. And besides that, I will advise people that if they really feel that they need a job and they can build the structure behind for them to be absent for eight hours a day, they should pick that up a job. Because you never know, opportunities are out there. You know, the more you talk to people, the more um, opportunities you're gonna have. Like there is a quote that Grant Cardone said on this show, The Undercover Billionaire, he says, who has my money? Yeah. You know, somebody has your money. There is a person walking out there right now and maybe they have your money. That's your next contract maybe. Go talk to them. Don't be shy, right. don't be shy. Right. Hey, Y'all already know I'm a big, big fan of Grant Cardone, man. <laughs> All right, I got one more for you before we jump into the lightning round and it's this. What would you say has been the hardest part of building your business so far? Um, I will say that the hardest part is uh, dealing with myself. Okay. Because when you start a business, you have high expectations that you're going to make a million dollars, you know. Uh, but it doesn't happen overnight. And then that's why a lot of people quit when they open a business. They work two years in their business. They don't see the millions coming in, yeah. right? They quit, but I'm not a quitter. So I have to learn how to reinvent myself. You know, I'm doing this. If I look a year, you know, behind, I'm better than I was before. Yeah. So how can I be in the next two or five years? You know, I'm going to be way ahead. Right. So it's just dealing with my, my inner self, you know, trying to find ways to stay motivated, um, and yeah, that, because the business is a business, you know, if you know how to work and you know how to do things, it's, you're going to make it grow. But if you're not okay with yourself, then your business is not going to be okay because you're the vision behind it. We're going to jump into this lightning round right quick. So I'm going to say a word or a phrase and then you just tip the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, here we go. So the first word is Nicaragua. <laughs> Nicaragua. Right. Your home country. <laughs> My home country, yes. So, lots of nature okay. in Nicaragua. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright, California or Florida? So pick yeah. pick, pick one. Two, yeah. um, I would say, I would say Florida. Okay. okay. I would say Florida. Is there a reason why? Well, um, one of the thing is, uh, there is a big like Latino community out here. Yeah. Um, I I like California a lot, but I don't have good memories of California, so. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Uh, entrepreneurship. Pick one word. <laughs> okay. Social media. Social media. Think about somebody that I that drives me in social media, I would say uh, Cody Sanchez. Cody Sanchez, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the platform that, the, excuse me, the social media platform that you spend the most time on. 
Uh, it will be Instagram. Okay, okay. Uh, 850 credit score or a million dollars cash? 850 credit score. Okay. If yeah. you had to say you had like one hidden talent that nobody knows about, what would it be? Uh, it will be that I care, I truly care for people. Okay. And I'm willing to put people uh, before in the number one place and like forget about myself. Yeah. Me too. After a while, <laughs> had to start changing that a little bit. Though. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. But yeah. But it is, you're right, that is a talent though, for sure, because it is, yeah. All right. Key to success. Never give up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, your favorite hobby when you got some free time? It's uh, being with my kids. Nice. Uh, favorite YouTube channel other than mine? Well, I like Carolyn Orejano a lot. Oh, Carolyn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was watching uh, the live yesterday. Yeah, she uh, she was telling how she started and yeah. everything, and my wife she's she's trying to do her own business, so we're trying to learn. You know. Yeah, yeah. Definitely check her out. She she like Carolyn. Yeah. All right. Uh, best decision you made in business so far? Best decision. To start, to start, <laughs> yeah, to get too. started, give that first step, yeah, right. because people, they think it too much, and the years go by, and they never get started. Yep, okay, uh, your favorite genre of music? Uh, I will say I like, uh, I like reggaeton a lot. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, your go-to karaoke song, if you had to sing a karaoke song, and you like depending on it. Uh, I will go to Vicente Fernandez, he's a Mexican singer okay. of, um, yeah, right. the song is called La Diferencia. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, I know how to sing it really well. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't tip me now. I throw it on for you. <laughs> all right, top five. Oh, I, all right, we'll do. I usually do top five rappers all the time. Let's do top five reggaeton artists of all time. I try to say it with that. I can't do it. I try to say it like with the accent. The, 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 the artist. Yeah, yeah, top five. Yeah, so uh, one of them is uh, Daddy Yankee. Okay. Uh, then there is um, Julio Voltio, which is really good. He's really old. And then third one, I would say it, uh, Don Omar. Okay. Wisin and Yandel. Okay, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, they're really good. And uh, another one would be, um, I don't know how to, who, to, who to think about now. Do you know Nori? No, Nori. Noriega. Noriega, yes. Did he count? I, yeah. He I, count? Yeah. Okay, because you know he a rapper first, but then he went reggaeton. So I'm like, I don't know. Do y'all take him serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Fair enough, man. All right. Well, we will leave it there. That wraps it up for the lightning round. Now I got a couple more questions for you, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So okay. My next question is: First off, actually, I want to ask you this. How old are you, by the way, if you don't mind? Sharing? I'm 27 years old. I turned 27 in December uh, last year. That's what's up, bro. Do you think that? I guess because you said you started your first company at 18 as well. You're 27 now. I started my first company at 19. And um, do you think that there's, like, if somebody wanted to start a business, right, and they like in their teens, they're watching this, what advice would you give to them? Should they go to college? Should they start at 18 or 19 like we did? Should they go in the military? Like, what advice would you give somebody? Uh, so when we're young, we think that we have the world to our, our feet, you know? Mm -hmm because our dad or our moms, they're helping us. But when we come to the real life, it gets really tough. I would say that one advice I will, I will give this young generation is to read, read okay. books. Uh, I, I will say that there is a book that saved my life because I was really lost. I was going to college and I dropped out and I was really lost. I didn't know what to do. Um, and then I found, I went to a friend's house and she had a book it's called the Rich Dad Poor Dad, oh, yeah. and I told her I have heard about that book, and she's like, "Take it." I my dad gave it to me, and I haven't, I have never read it. Just take it with you, and I started reading that book, and that got me into reading different other books, yeah. and that's how it all started. Yeah. Um, so just educate yourself, educate yourself. It's really important to always learn. Okay, so that friend that gave you the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Let me ask you this: Does she own a company now? Is she in business? Mm. How's she doing? I don't even know what she's doing. Okay, I'm just wondering because I, I was going to say she should have kept that book for herself. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> know what she's doing. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing, but uh, before I came to the U.S., I had all these books. Yeah. And what I decided to do is I wanted to pay it forward. So I posted on my Instagram uh, all the books that I had. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, who wants a book? I'll give it to them for free. And a lot of people reach out and I say, I want, I want this book. I want that book. So I give this to somebody else uh, that I hope that in, uh, in a couple of years, you know, they reach out and say, hey, thanks for this book. It helped me to build what I have today, right? Because I think that it is really important to, to read books. People say, oh, you know, the book, what can, the, can a book teach me? But it can like awake something inside of you that you didn't know that you even have. Right. Love it. I love it. Now, what is your long term goal for Link Up? So, my long term goal is to get to a thousand clients okay. uh, that translates into like a, a lot of revenue for me, yes. uh, yeah. and then hire somebody that can run it for me. Um, my term goal for my life is I want to get people to get started in life. Um, I have always been afraid to like try to help people. Yeah. But that's what I want to do. I want to, to help these young people, you know, that they're having issues in their life. They don't know how to get started. Um, I don't feel like I'm the most successful person in the world, but I know that I might know some things that I can teach to others that are coming behind us, the younger generation. Yeah, love it, love it. Sound like you got a YouTube channel in your, in your future. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> All right, now, if you had to start all over again from zero, you got nothing, you lose it all right now, what would you do to rebuild and get back up to this point? Um, that, that's something, it's, it's a hard question, right? Because you never think that you can lose something that you already built, yeah. but we have to be uh, clear. It can happen yeah. at any time. So I will say that I will go back to, to what I did at the beginning, you know, cold calling, trying to talk to people, look for my first client. Um, if, if I have to get rid of my lifestyle, if I have to get rid of the car that I have, I'll get rid of it, you know, go back to zero. Just make sure that I have uh, food to provide for my family yeah. and I can always start from scratch. I think it's really important. If you already did it once, you're going to be able to do it again. Facts, yeah. What you get a taste of, it, it's like how Steve Harvey says, you get that first class ticket, you're never going to want to go back. So. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's true. I, ha I have seen that video too. Yeah. All right, now, if somebody's watching this video right now, they're thinking about starting their, their own business, getting into entrepreneurship, but they're just kind of scared to make that jump, what could you tell that person right now? Well, I will tell them that you only have one opportunity to live in this world. And at the end of the day, no one's going to remember you, uh, you know, because you had the best job in the world. But they're going to remember you for the risk that you took because when once you start your business and if you make it big, you're gonna leave um, a good, you know, um, you're gonna leave a good legacy behind you. You know, you're you're not working for yourself anymore. You're working for the people that is coming behind your back, uh, whether it's your family, your kids, your dad, your mom. So just just get started. The, the, what what's the worst that can happen? You fail. You, you really don't have anything. You haven't even getting started. So if you fail, just keep trying again. I have failed more than five businesses since I was 18. And I feel that finally this is the one that it's working out really well. Hey, that's it, bro. I love it. And that's how I know this is definitely the one. Because when you got some failures under your belt, it's up from there. I, I definitely can speak from experience, bro. <laughs> so with that said, Roberto Saldano, y'all, thank you so much for coming on. Roberto, how can we follow your journey? Well, so I I have my Instagram account. It's Roberto Linkup CEO. Or you can, if you want to talk to me and ask me some questions, you can reach out to my phone number. I'll give you my personal line. It's 408-230-2943. And we can talk. We can have a meeting and just talk about life. It doesn't have to be about business. All right, man. Appreciate that, Roberto. You can regret putting that number out there about one year from now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. Appreciate you, brother. Listen, every single year I host the biggest celebration of the cleaning industry, and that's the Clean Biz Network Conference, y'all. And get ready. Get your tickets ASAP before time runs out. Go to www.cbnconference.com and meet me there. We're going to be in Las Vegas, y'all. Las Vegas at the JW Marriott Hotel. Get your tickets. You do not want to miss this event. Every single year it gets bigger and better. The dates are February 28th through March 1st, 2024.
and this year, and we got a special guest hosting, y'all. This next conference that will be hosted by none other than Tenacity Academy, y'all. Tenacity Clean, y'all seen them on their YouTube channel, Mr. Johnson, Miss Tamika. They're going to kill it. They're going to bring that energy. And not only them, we also got some amazing speakers lined up for y'all. I'm talking about Mr. Eric Coffey from GovCon Giants. If you are interested in government contracts, everybody knows Eric Coffey is the man. He is the GOAT of the government contract, y'all. So you definitely want to be there here from him. We got Raylan Dunlap from the Hustle Network. Check out our YouTube channel. Massive, all about just hustling and getting to this money, y'all. Shout out to the Cleaning Balls family. Meet DJ The Balls at the Clean Business Network Conference. We also got Mila, the host keeper, the queen of Airbnb cleaning, y'all. Miss Carolyn Arilano, y'all already know that she killing it as well in the cleaning space. The legendary Debbie Sardone who has been the number one residential cleaning consultant for I don't know how long now. She's probably the best to ever do it in the residential cleaning space. Mr. Mario Kelly, who specializes in stadiums, y'all. If you ever wanted to know how to get those big contracts cleaning the sports stadiums and all of that, you do not want to miss this. Mario Kelly will be there. And we also have the king of client attraction. Mr. Mark Quill Russell will be in the building. You do not want to miss the event. And we have so many other great speakers as well. Too many to name. Not to mention we're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have special dinners served. It's going to be a black tie affair. We're going to give out awards. I'm telling you, it's going to be so big. Live DJs, you do not want to miss this event. Go to www.cbnconference.com. Get your tickets. Meet me there. Meet my wife. Meet my kids. We all going to be there. Let's get it, y'all.